Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash ask reddit where user M367 asked Children of I want to speak to your manager parents, commonly known as Karens, what has been your most embarrassing experience? One time my granddad got a sausage roll at a football match during half time. When he got back to his seat he found it was overdone, the pastry was quite burned. The man was irate. He didn't take it back straight away as the second half was about to start, but he spent much of the second half angry lamenting his savoury snack let down. So he takes it home, calls the customer service number on the back, I assume he had a few choice words for the poor soul on the other end, but I wasn't present for this, and keeps the remainder of the sausage roll in the freezer for the next couple of weeks. Skip ahead to the next match day. My granddad tells me we're heading out early so he can have his sausage roll replaced. The customer service line told him to go to kiosk 3 at the front of the ground next to the ticket office. When we arrive, however, the shutters are down at the food place. The old man looks around growling and turning red in the face, stamps right over to window number 3 of the ticket office and slams his frozen burned sausage roll down like a fucking flaky gauntlet. At this point I'm trying to convince him that the ticket office was a completely different department to the catering concession, but my granddad was having none of it. The lady working the ticket window continually attempted in vain to convince him the same. They sell match tickets, not hot snacks. But this just got him angrier and angrier. Across comes a colleague behind the glass. Now there's just two people to rage at. Then a head steward came to try and defuse the situation and my granddad begins to wave the burnt sausage roll in this man's face. I was actually surprised he didn't whack him with it. At this point I'm mortified by the whole affair wishing I had stayed back at the house until nearer kickoff. Eventually, after an hour or so, the shutters come up on the food concession. Fella at the counter goes, you must be Mr Allergenge, and calmly resolves the situation, dispatching a freshly baked sausage roll with the steady hands of a surgeon. My granddad is completely satisfied with the result of his hour of insolent rage. As we're walking away, he turns to me and says, that's how you get these things sorted. I was 13 when this happened. My mum had made a reservation at a hotel for a trip, but when she got there, the lady said there was some error with the reservation that my mum's payment didn't go through, so the lady offered us a double bedroom for a discount. Rather than just taking the room, thanking the lady and leaving, my mum decided the best course of action would be to scream in the middle of a hotel lobby, NOBODY IS GOING ANYWHERE TILL I GET MY FUCKING ROOM! She then proceeded to pester the lady, who clearly couldn't do anything about it until eventually she called the police on my mom for public disturbance. Mortifying. Not my parent, but grandparent. When I was around 10 years old, my grandmother went out and got us, her, my brother and me, at McDonald's. We got home and we didn't have napkins in the bags. No big deal, right? We have paper towels and napkins in the house. Also, me and my brother are pretty good with not making any messes while we eat. Nope. Grandmother got us in the car, drove us back to McDonald's, demanded a manager, and screeched about how upset she was that we didn't get any napkins. I wanted to just melt into the floor and disappear. It's just napkins, nanny. When I was a young child on a long distance flight, my mother let me and my brother sleep on the floor. For safety reasons, the flight attendants told my mother that we were not allowed to sleep on the floor. She started to argue with the flight attendants, who then turned to the pilots. The pilots threatened to turn the plane around unless we get up from the floor, but she continued to argue. The pilots announced they were about to turn around because of my mother, so all the other passengers got pissed. Eventually she caved in when she had all passengers and flight crew on a Boeing 747 against her. I like that a parent got hit with a I will turn this thing around card. She got out mommed. I worked at Best Buy. I stopped in with my mom one day because she wanted to buy me the Star Wars DVD box set for my birthday. I had a huge huge crush on the girl that was working the customer service counter. Well, the DVD set rang up $10 more than it was priced and my mom deliberately didn't say anything until after the transaction so she could claim the effing $5 Michigan scan law bounty. My crush didn't know how to process it and the manager was busy so my mom tore into her about how it was her job and how she should understand how to do these things. At my job, to a girl I liked. My life was a misery for a while afterwards. I grew up in a smaller town, right on the cusps of its big growth boom. We knew our town had finally made it when we got an olive garden. We used to eat there two to three times a month. 
My mum and I would always split an entree and my dad would get his own. We knew the rule if you're splitting an entree and you get more than one of the family style bowls of salad, then you'll get charged an extra $4 for the extra person. Which is fair, two entrees come with two unlimited salads. Well, one day my dad decides he wanted more salad. Only, he wants the additional salad, but the waitress said if she refills the bowl, that we will be charged the extra $4. Well, lo and behold, my parents threw the biggest tantrum because only he wanted the additional salad. They demanded to speak to a manager and the manager explained the rule, which we knew, but offered to comp the extra salad just to get my parents to stop yelling. And they did. When our bill came, the manager comped my dad's entree and the additional salad fee. Well, my mum got up, interrupted the manager while he was talking to other guests and threw the cheque in his face and asked, What's this? She was furious that he comped my dad's meal. He ate the meal, therefore we would like to pay for it. She wouldn't stop raising her voice until she was allowed to pay for the meal, but not the salad. The manager was confused, but obliged. When they brought the change, the manager slipped a few free appetizer coupons. My mum ripped them up and threw them on the ground as she left. Safe to say I didn't eat out with them for at least a month and I still refuse to go to Olive Garden with them. Scene, any fast food drive through Worker, ma'am, can you drive forward a little bit while your food finishes up? Mom, no. Bold's arms. My dad just loved to argue, and he loved a deal. We were shopping in a department store, and I found a pair of pants I was mildly interested in. The pants were tagged at, let's say, $40, and the sign on the rack was, all pants, $25. I was mildly interested. I asked the sales clerk if they had them in my size. The clerk said, those aren't supposed to be on that rack. My dad lost his shit and insisted on getting the pants for $25 and started asking for a courtesy discount on top of that. Escalated to the floor manager and the store manager. Meanwhile, I didn't want the pants. They were okay pants, I guess. Nothing awesome. I just didn't care very much about them. I was more than happy to move on. I told my dad I didn't want the pants. By then, he didn't care about what I wanted. He wanted the pants at the better price. Eventually, after like an hour of arguing, the store manager said, We're not giving you the pants at that price. Take them or leave them at $40. So we left them, which suited me fine because I didn't want the pants. Not me, but my sister-in-law. Her stepdad and mom took the family out to eat a red lobster. They got there and it's super busy. So the stepdad walks up to the host and says, Yes, we have a reservation. The problem is, red lobster, or at least that one, doesn't take reservations. The host explains this and says it's going to be a 20 minute wait for seating. Her stepdad flipped out and started screaming that he had called three hours beforehand and made a reservation. The host politely told him this was not possible as they do not take reservations. Again, he continues to scream at the guy and says he wants to talk to a manager. So the manager comes out and she tells him the same thing. They don't take reservations so it's not possible that he had made one. He continues to cause a scene and people started leaving just to get away from this toxic guy. Fine, we will put you ahead of everyone else that has been patiently waiting their turn. He says, thank you. They get seated. Once they get to the table and the waitress walks away, he slyly winks and says to my brother and the rest of the family, that is how you get things done. I wasn't going to wait 20 minutes. My brother refused to eat or order for fear of getting food that had been spit on. My mother-in-law is truly a Karen. Going out to eat with her is always a nightmare. Her orders have 14 special requests, but she's not all that kind about it. She's defensive from the get-go, like you're an idiot who's already screwed the order up. No dressing, not on the side, nothing, completely dry. Do you understand? I will send it back. The one I will never forget though was dinner at Joe's Crab Shack. In case you've never been, it's one of those places that every so often plays a song that the entire staff is required to drop everything and do a little synchronised dance to. It's quick, everyone gets a little kick out of it, it's part of the fun. Now my mother-in-law Karen knew this, it's not like she'd never been here, but apparently she was not willing to wait two extra minutes for her dry salad, so she starts going off as soon as the dancing starts. She gets a manager who clearly knows Karen well and offers a quick apology for doing their job, a discount on her dry ass salad, but Karen's not completely satisfied. She tells us that even though dinner for our party of eight is on her, she's not tipping the waitress one penny. She proceeds to bitch loudly the rest of the meal and antagonise our waitress over petty shit. I worked too many years in customer service and you know, I'm a decent human being. 
I made sure to get my bills separate so I could tip for the entire table. I wrote a quick note on the receipt, something along the lines of, way to stay positive even when the customer's a jerk. I was a little afraid of the wrath of Karen, it was one of the first interactions with her too, but when the waitress came and hugged me, Karen and I locked eyes. She knew. I didn't care. Don't be a cunt, Karen. When I was six, my mum took my brothers and I out to Golden Corral for dinner. She went up to the buffet, got a steak and came back to the table. She's an avid A1 steak sauce fan and cannot, I repeat, cannot eat steak without it. She poured out the A1 onto her plate, tasted it and was instantly horrified. She proceeded to pour out the Golden Corral steak sauce right next to the A1 and it matched perfectly. Outraged, she called over a waitress and eventually the manager showing them her little experiment and how she exposed the great steak sauce fraud of 06. My brothers and I were scarred for the rest of our lives. I still have nightmares about it. One time I was in a record store with my dad. He bought a record that was 1999 euros. He paid using a 20 euro bill. The clerk took the money and put it in the register and gave my dad the CD in a plastic bag. I started walking off when I noticed my dad wasn't moving. As I turn around, I hear him say to the record store clerk, you still have to give me my cent back. The clerk replies that they don't return one or two cents because they don't accept them and as such don't have them in the store. My dad replies by saying that is judiciously impossible and asks for the manager. To make a long story short, one of the clerks gives my dad a cent from his own wallet. My dad is kind of a drunk, a rich drunk. We were out at an extremely nice restaurant in our small town, a very foodie and chic place that had only been open for a couple of years and had since become my favourite restaurant. I was sitting at a table with my siblings and cousins, all of us college age, while my dad was sitting with my aunt and uncle and mom at a table nearby. By the time we get our food, the parents are still sitting there chugging their wine with no food. My dad starts getting upset. I hear him call the waitress over. She brings him some bread and leaves them alone. We finish our meals and our parents are still sitting there without food and several empty bottles of wine. My mum has essentially fallen asleep at this point. My father, furious, starts banging his fists on the table, shaking all of the silverware. The waitress goes into the kitchen to find the chef, but she is apparently taking too long. My dad storms into the kitchen. I hear him screaming at the top of his lungs like a fucking toddler. The chef, calmly, politely walks him back to his table. He sits down and in the calmest voice possible says, Fuck you, sir. Now get the fuck out of my restaurant. We have not been back since. Probably the time my mum threw a plate of spaghetti at a waitress because they didn't know if it had dairy in it or not. Apparently, that was good enough reason to throw a plate of spaghetti at someone. Preface by saying that my dad is insane and has some sort of undiagnosed severe mental disorder that he calls personality. Anywho, once he and I went through a Starbucks drive through and he was smoking a cigarette in the car, which I can't stand. When he rolled up to the pickup window, he accidentally blew his cigarette smoke in the barista's face as they took our money. The barista made a face that any of us would make in this situation and waved the smoke out of his face. He made no comment, but that would never stop my dad from taking offence. Dad, what's the matter with you? Barista, sir, could we ask you not to smoke at the drive through window? It's our policy and California law, by the way, not to let anyone smoke within 20 feet of... Don't talk down to me, I know my rights, you're fucking rude, don't wave your hand in my face. Sir, I really wasn't. I'm done with you, get your boss over here. Manager comes over and my dad claims that the barista is being racist. Dad is white, barista was black, and that we shouldn't have to pay. Dad threatens to call corporate to... Get all your asses fired! Manager apologised profusely, but I could feel and understand a steady undercurrent of... Please fucking kill me and end this conversation. My dear old man stayed at the window for the next 15 minutes while the people behind us were losing their marbles. I should have said something. I should have stopped him, called out his ridiculous behaviour and apologised to both baristas. Instead, I sat there in the passenger seat and tried to will my atoms to lose structure and disappear from the fucking earth. I've never been more mortified to be related to him. This was my mother. I'd purchased these Puma shoes, you know the ones, the kind that had like different types of car logos on the sides or some BS from Foot Locker. They were like 70 to $80, can't remember. They were the most expensive things she had bought me in a long time. Anyway, a few days of use, the front of them kind of got scuffed up. They were really white with some red, so that would be expected. My mother was having none of that, so she took the shoes and marched straight back to the Foot Locker store and demanded we not only get a refund, but also a replacement pair. 
For 10 minutes she argued that they're puma shoes, so they should be held to a much higher standard and shouldn't scuff so easily, no matter what. All I could do was hold my head down as she argued with these poor minimum wage cashiers about the topic. To make matters worse, the customers in line behind us started arguing with her too and telling her that puma or not, shoes scuff and suffer damage. It happens. She was having none of that either. After about 20 minutes of back and forth screaming from her end, she insulted them a bunch and they threatened to call security. And the line she kept shouting back at them was, why am I stealing from you? During and after the fact, she seemed to truly believe that this is the only reason why security would be called. Security was called, came over and escorted us out of the place. The whole way home, she kept yelling and screaming about it and shouting, I should have split the shoes open with a knife, then they would have had to refund and replace. I think I have a good one. I was a teenager and my mum took us to a video rental slash bookstore slash music store. She bought some movie or another and the store kept most of their DVDs in locked security cases until they were purchased. My mum, for who knows what reason, crazy mean, decided she wanted to keep the security case. Of course, the clerk wouldn't give it to her, so my mum threw a big nasty yelling fit about it in front of everyone. The manager was, in fact, called and the answer was still no. I don't remember how the situation ended. Probably I temporarily blacked out to save myself the immense embarrassment she put me through. I was at a dollar store buying diapers with my mother. She'd gone over a limit on her mobile plan, so the data had been disabled until she upgraded her plan or waited until the end of the month. My mother asked for the manager to fix their Wi-Fi. The store only had a private network for business computers and stuff. The manager told my mother that, and being the entitled narcissistic mom she is, demanded access to the Wi-Fi network so she could apply her 5% off coupon because she's a NICU nurse and needs those diapers for use at home. The manager argued about how he couldn't give her access to the network because of recent issues with other customers' use of the system. Mom got angry and started screaming at the manager. I don't even remember the argument because I was so embarrassed I had to leave the store with my hell tongue in shame. The weirdest part? Mom didn't have a baby. She wasn't pregnant either. It's been two years and I still wonder what those diapers were for. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit.